Hey, uh, thanks for stopping by. This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And lately, I've had a streak of two successful repairs, I'll call it. Um, one being that DX100, although I don't think it's 100% yet. The other one is, I think I've improved my audio uh, recording capability using a headset. So I thought I would see if my luck is still holding out and see if I can fix this antenna switch. Let me zoom in here a second. Okay, this is a, a four position antenna switch. So you can either hook a single radio here and then have four antennas hooked up, which is what I use it for, or you can hook up four radios to one antenna. I got this uh, many years ago at a ham fest and got it at a very reasonable price. And the reason being is this number one position is open, doesn't work. Um, the other three positions seem to work, but I've had to jiggle the switch sometimes to get it to connect. Now. On the back of this, and I try to fo get it to focus in, there's a little plaque that was taped on. Caution, read carefully. And it says, do not remove the back plate. No user servable, serviceable components inside. And then it says, improper removal may damage the internal drive mechanization, such damage will not be covered by the warranty. And I think what they're referring to there is I've taken similar ones apart and you gotta be careful because things can pop out or come out when you're turning it over and the, the mechanism gets messed up. I'm going to go ahead and press my luck and see if I can at least see what the problem is with number one and see if I need to clean the contacts on the other two. So here we go. I'm trying to be really careful. This plate right here is attached to this part right here. So this might be a mistake doing this, but I'm going to try it anyway. I don't even know if I can get into it. I'm going to have to... Uh, they put tape all the way across this. I got some of it off. And hopefully I can get to these screws and take out the correct ones. Let's go. Here we go. What the heck? May not even be with it. Whoops. Went the wrong direction, dummy. Ooh, there we go. That one finally came loose. I, I love this power screwdriver. Um, they don't make them anymore. And the problem is I was always scrounging to get the little uh, power. Let me pull it out here for a second. I say, pull it. Oh, gosh. Well, I've jammed that one in there somehow. But um, there's a little power cylinder that goes in this and they're really hard to find nowadays they've gotten away from this i think it's like three volts this has been a terrific power screwdriver i found one at a flea market uh, for a buck because it they didn't have any uh, power modules and um, these go bad after about a year these are kind of weak that i got left anyway so i really love this screwdriver but i'd like to find a replacement for it since they don't make this anymore. You have to be a little careful though because it's got a lot of torque. But it sure can make uh, removing screws really fast. So, okay, so we got three more screws. Let's try the next one here, not to break through the plastic here. There we go. That one came out. Now, like I say, I might end my good luck here on this 
particular device. Okay, it appears to be loose. Got to be really careful here. Okay, there's the mechanism. Let me see if I can hold up the camera a little better. As you can see, the contacts could be considerably dirty. Now, let me see if I can zoom in on this. This is the part that is the switch on the other side. I don't want to turn it over because something might fly out, fall out. So this is where the contacts are made to the center connector. And let's see. It's not too bad. Now this is this is number one. This is one is not working. I can't see an obvious reason it's not working. Uh, let me get up again close to the camera. Now I'll try to turn this switch real easy. There's the uh, null position, which means none of the four connectors are connected. And then it goes around like that. So, I'm trying to figure out how exactly it works. So it looks like, okay, what it does, I don't know if it'll show up, but this little device here, let me get a pencil or something, um, this little device here that's rotating pushes up on each of these individual contacts to this contact band right here and therefore it connects each one of these to the center one here that's how it works hope I explained that and showed that to you good enough so let me see if I can turn it here so see it goes underneath, <coughs> excuse me, and pushes up each of these strips into this rounded strip here that makes the contact. So probably where the bad connections are is underneath this center strip that goes across each one of these. Now why the first position, which I believe is right here, why it's not working. I can't see anything obvious. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an alcohol swab and kind of just swab this thing out. I don't want to use anything abrasive, of course. So I've got some contact cleaner, which I'll go get right now if I don't trip. Get my chair moving. There we go. Oh, stand by. I'm going to take my headphones off. Now, uh, once again, I wasn't prepared. <clears throat> I didn't, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't realize this would be that easy to get apart. But anyway, I've got some of this CRC electrical parts cleaner. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and I will spray some of that cleaner on this Q-tip and just swab out those little strips. being very careful here these uh, these do look a little oxidized see the discoloration like I say I don't want to use any abrasives on this Let me move the switch here. Q 
can't really get underneath there. Let me use a brush. So I can get that uh, contact cleaner down underneath those little strips. Get back in the view of the camera here. Move the switch so I could do the one that was on. And it seemed like uh, when I first used, started using this again about a month ago, uh, I wasn't getting any contact or not good contact. So I had to just uh, flip the switch back and forth, back and forth, and then it started working. It, this first channel, first, which, yeah, this is the first one, and it's not working at all. And I don't see any problem. I don't see any breaks. Oops. I don't see any breaks in here at all. Um, could be the connector itself. These are quite dirty down inside. Swab some cleaner down in there. See if that helps any. Let's kind of dust things out. So that's about all I can do. This is a pretty heavy duty switch and you can see these channels and everything that helps to uh, keep from getting cross talk between the various inputs or outputs, whichever they may be. It's about all I can do. Um, I'm really surprised I don't see anything obvious that I could end up breaking. So I'm going to put um, a little more cleaner on it, and then I'll button it back up. Like I say, I'm a little hesitant to use anything abrasive on this up here. These are pretty lightweight contacts, and I could end up breaking something that I do not want to do. So I'm just going to try to clean it up as good as I can. Again, <clears throat> you can see some discoloration on those little strips. It's interesting how this is made. So I'm going to uh, let this sit for a while, let that cleaner dissolve, and put it back together. Hook up some antennas and see if I've improved anything. So anyway, that's the show for today. I hope my luck holds out and I've improved the quality of of this antenna switch. Thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, these antenna switches are quite expensive. There, if you get one right now, they're eighty-five dollars. Kind of expensive, but they give you a four position. Um, you can buy them also in a two position. And you can buy it with different connectors, UF, UHF connectors versus these VHF connectors. So anyway, if you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.